I'd like to introduce Chief Executive of Glen Dimplex Consumer Appliances, the newly formed company owned by Glen Dimplex. Andy Griffiths, industry veteran, 38 years. Apparently, yeah, there it's amazing. 10 years at Samsung as uh, Samsung UK and Ireland Vice President and then President, and you took over a new role at Glen Dimplex. Glen Dimplex CEO of Glen Dimplex Consumer Appliances. So a little bit up, up a date for those of you who uh, know you from your uh, old company. Um, how you, you know, what, what, tell us about Glendimix Consumer Appliances. Yeah, four about. months into it now, Sean. Thanks and good afternoon, everybody. I know it's been a long day, so we're going to make this uh, especially interesting for you, hopefully. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the, the, set, the, the job I've taken on now is about bringing nine brands together across yeah. the Glendimplex mix of consumer appliances. So, uh, big in uh, the MDA space uh, through the Belling and Stoves brands, New World, Britannia, Lec Refrigeration. A lot of that coming out of the Prescott factory up in uh, Merseyside, big cooker factory, very big in cooking. Uh, we have 30% or something like that of the market share in Australia, who knew? Uh, so it's a global uh, business as well, different territories that we're involved in. SDA, big brand called Morphe Richards. Uh, apparently everybody's got one. It's uh, about 5 million units a year business, very interesting business globally again for us and uh, another great brand. And uh, the famous brand you've heard a lot about already today, Roberts Radio, and uh, where that's going in the future. So a mix of different product categories, territories. I think you sum it up as a kind of home of great British brands. Yeah, yeah. Great. So before we came in today, like I did with Robert, I asked you to kind of give, give me three bullet points on things that the industry, or retailers and brands can do to kind of you know, improve their business and to look forward as we hit this turning point in our industry. So First bullet point you sent me, so invest in line, online to improve your customer experience. So we've heard a lot about online today, we've had a lot yeah. about customer experience. Yeah, I know this is one of the sort of last one-to-one -one today. I think we're kind of summing up on a lot of really good points today, by the way, including for all my brand colleagues, let's support ERT with some advertising this year. I think that's one of the first uh, calling cards. Yeah, yeah. Short <laughs> one's work going very well. He's done a great job today. Oh, he's good, isn't he? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think it's a serious point, um, but you know we've heard a lot about what people are doing in the online space now, and I think there's a number of dimensions behind this that a lot of good people are already doing and have already mentioned. When I when I look at the sort of nine ten percent that the independent trade take from a GFK point of view, I think there's more business there actually. I think that's a very solid percentage that's left. There's some really good people left in the business. I'm very encouraged by that, and I, I want to come onto that from what we've seen today. But the rest of you who are not already doing it, lots are, need to make sure you have an online competency to complete the customer journey, to be close enough to your, con your consumers in 2017. And the way they interact, the way they research, the way they make their choices about their key products and all their electrical products. I think a lot of that can be channeled through a joint activity with brands, and brands should take responsibility for giving you the assets, giving you the channels, to work through. I think a lot of that is some of the work we're starting to do. I know how complex it is. I'm trying to bring all the Glen Dimplex brands together and that ain't easy. But the, the way that social media uh, is a very key local connection with you. I've framed some of these answers in the context of, you know, Sean knows I like to think about the mega trends mm -hmm. and the big uh, picture issues out there. So much stuff that's changing in people's lives at the moment. Let's just look at this year. Um, Brexit means, Donald Trump means, more stuff going on in Europe means that the, the previous trend of globalisation and post-recession, post-2008, is switching more to local influences, uh, more national influences. But I think um, very important things about you know, it's not all about London anymore. It's all about what's going on in the heartland of the country with real people, town by town. And I think those are the opportunities for an independent realtor to get back to their core values of understanding their market, servicing their market. One of the great ways to do that, which you've all got individual businesses, and there's nothing wrong with that for me, but brands should give you platforms to bounce off and to tailor that to your own business and make sure you have a particular story, but therefore you have to get social media. You have to get the e-commerce opportunities. You have to communicate that way these days. And uh, I think that's a powerful message from the whole group of people we've heard from today. Yeah. 
Second point, uh, resist Me Too offers. This is something that Robert's actually said as well. Find a niche or your specialty. Well, Glenn Dimplex yeah. are great at that. So yeah. it's kind of, it's a bit obvious for me to say that, but it's something I've believed about through the years. I think, you know, there is uh, a standard formula out there. What does local mean, by the way? What does national mean? One of the things we see across a lot of consumer brands, um, one that I was quite amused at at Christmas with a friend pointing out to me, the big gin brands. Gin's the drink of the year, right? But it's not about drinking the, the massive global brands. It's about a lot of smaller craft brands that have reinvented the market. We have a great one uh, in, Gr in Guildford called Silent Pool Gin, which is in a very, very beautiful bottle. You go there and buy um, a, that specific type of gin. And I think people really appreciate what's going on in their community. Uh, I think you've got to reflect that in the product range that you bring through, in the brands that you work with. Whatever you do, don't be ordinary. And I love to hear the stories to bear today about craft fairs, cooking fairs, all the kind of things you are hooking into because the big retail brands have done their job in presenting a fairly standard and a fairly homogenous picture to consumers. You can bring something else and it's a lot more personality, it's a lot more individualization. These are trends that consumers are really into and if you express that well, it's an advantage that no other retailer can do better than you. And the third point, answer the question that always on marketing demands. And some people are going to go, Andy, that's just marketing. What is always on marketing? Yeah, but that's, that mean? that's my background marketing. Yeah. So sorry if that comes across as a bit <laughs> of a marketing phrase. But we live in an always on world. Yeah. Um, and the fact that we've heard a bit today about the proportion of sales that can come through to your stores outside of normal opening hours. That's no surprise to a lot of people in this room. And it's back to a little bit about the competencies you need online, but it's also about how active you are in that, in that community. And, you know, there's a balance in the demographics between an aging population, a more mature population, I think I should count myself in that now at 55, and the sort of expectations and demands that they want, which is much more about personal service, great installation, great follow-up, um, and the younger people who are looking for a different kind of purchase and a different kind of experience. We've heard about some of the great work going on in the rental market these days. Millennials are different. I've got three of them called my sons who are a bit strange. And you have to understand what they're, compared to us, they want different things but they certainly want retail experience and the level of expertise that, that you can bring. I mean, one of the, the things that came up today, and I was talking to a couple of industry stalwarts at lunchtime, was what are we doing to bring the next generation of young people into our industry? Lovely to hear Marcus, I think, mention about going to the local universities, training people through local business schools and, and university campuses. I'm a great believer in that kind of thing. Why don't we? Like, can I call uh, for a push as an industry to work with industry bodies to in, in, install a graduate program for our industry? Why aren't more graduates joining the consumer electronics industry and pointing them at uh, independent retailers specifically? Why aren't brands clubbing together to put a fund in there that bring not just a new uh, stream of talent into our business, but lots of great new ideas. And surely, look at this group here, look at the, the people we have in this business and the knowledge and experience and the family that we have. We're sharing a lot of great ideas here. And that's the best side of the consumer electronics business I've loved for all my working life since my early retail days on the Rumbelow's shop floor. Lovely to see that Rumbelow's picture up there. <laughs> took, took me back. But, you know, why can't we club together and come up with something which is more focused on what we need to do tomorrow? And that includes our people. You represent nine brands now, possibly in the consumer appliances um, yes. portfolio. We've heard today, you know, people saying, well, the role of the supplier, from your point of view, you've worked for lots of suppliers, you've worked in the past for, for Sony, Samsung, Sharp. Um, what is the role of the supplier at the moment? What defines the role of the supplier? What do, what do retailers need suppliers to do, do you think? Yeah, I think there's been, again, lots of, sort of uh, suggestions about that yeah. uh, today. I think a supplier needs to be very clear about who its friends are, its distribution policy, 
who its customers are, which is about the real type of products that you need, and to understand where the business is going. I talk a lot to my new friends at Glendimplex companies and the different brands there about the context of the market going forward. I am convinced that we're going, as I touched on at the Retro Conference, for those of you who uh, remember that one earlier this uh, <coughs> last year, late last year, um, that the, the consumer electronics business is coming back into a, a very much more of a home zone. We have been, and I have been involved in Samsung, at largely a mobile period of time, dominated by the smartphone and obviously changing lifestyle completely and feeding into some of the things we're talking about. I think the great news for independent retailers, Sean, mm. is that we're going much more back with some great examples today into a period where the home is much more the focus. The connected period that we're talking about is much more about developing uh, facilities, solutions, experiences in people's homes. And that comes across a number of dimensions it's fascinating always to hear about the people who are already making it happen, that they include lighting, they include heating. By the way, Glenn Dimplex, one of the biggest heating manufacturers in the world. So I'll have to take that back to my colleagues on the heating side and make sure that the, uh, the products, I know they're developing lots of connected solutions. But I think it, it suggests that there is a, a development in terms of the product mix for independent retail as well. As well. I think the trend of inventing a new home set of experiences is very key for this group. Let's talk about the smart home a bit. I mean, your old company, you, the last few, a couple of years, you were very involved with the smart home internet thing, which yep. would be your, sort of your, your specialty and your speciality. Mm. We've heard a lot about the smart home today. We just don't really know what the smart home is, the, the connected home. Where, where do you see the opportunities for it? When you spoke at the retro conference last year, you said it was the biggest profit opportunity in 20 years for our industry. Mm. Want to elaborate a little bit on that and how you see it going and why it's so important for independents to get behind the smart home. Yeah, and I'm very much, first of all, in agreement with Ashley about, you know, this is a, this is a development uh, of the smart uh, categories we've had so far into more connected categories. And I think that's important for people to digest because you shouldn't be scared about it. Um, yes, there are some very practical solutions about having the right Wi-Fi platform. And we can't pretend that that is, that is a brilliant platform out there in the UK. But it does mean each uh, installation has a big opportunity to start from the ground up and make sure that all of the uh, bases are covered. I think um, the, the way that consumers now, though, have had that mobile experience, having been so close to the Samsung Galaxy brand over the last few years, we know that it has become the fifth limb, of course, for people. Uh, you cannot almost breathe without your smartphone working. We all spend too much time. I say to my wife, can I book an appointment to have a conversation with you, darling? Because mm. I know she's always looking at her next, usually online purchase and uh, you know, a parcel a day. It's great fun trying to distract her from that. <laughs> Uh, the, the interesting thing, though, is that people are already connected from a mobile proposition. You know, we look at the last Black Friday, Boxing Day, people talking about 80% of online sales were on a mobile device. So this is really ubiquitous now as a people experience. And I think the interesting thing, the way to think about it is just people are taking that lifestyle and they're bringing it home. They're bringing it home for things that make sense to them. They're bringing it home solution by solution. They're not necessarily doing It's nice to get the £100,000 work, isn't it, when that comes through. But they're doing it in 2000 and 3000 and 5000 pound lumps over a couple of years. And they will add to their experience in that time. Uh, I think what you have in total is a revolution in the home. When we look at what is the opportunity by 2020, 2021, as I suggested uh, late last year again in the, in the retro conference, we will not recognize the pattern of business that we have today. And you have to be ready for it because you have a lot of the skills that are needed already. As someone representing brands, what do you need your independent retailers? Glenn Dimplex, you talked about very strong independent heritage, strong heritage yeah. brands as well, you know, yeah. very British brands. What do you need retailers to do in order to be able to go on that customer journey with you into the connected world or just into the, you know, the local community? You know, where do we go from here as, a, as a retailers? Mm. 
Well, every business is different, and I, and I want to respect that because there are lots of great solutions for their uh, territories. I think, you know, we all bang on about online, and I've kind of made that point. What about the retail experience? You know, we've seen some amazing examples, I think inspirational examples today, about how the retail space has been reinvented. And the reality is that there is a lot of retail space out there. And it's interesting to think of uh, a bigger arena for people to use in different ways. For a lot of towns, I was talking to someone earlier, uh, a typical town where there, w there used to be six, seven electrical retailers and now there's one. So you have that opportunity to be the, the bigger experience. I think bigger stalls will help. And I think they become a differently laid out to a typical curry store, for example, or the favourites who here seem to be John Lewis today. There, there is a more uh, interesting dynamic going on around the stores. I like the room layouts. I like the fact if you, if you believe that the trend is about talking about a new home, a new type of home, then why aren't you building a home? in your stores and I think from a demonstration and an understanding point of view there is a role for that of course space is a practical issue for a lot of people I understand that but <coughs> thinking of the next two three four five years I think you should look for opportunities to grow into something which reflects more of this lifestyle change that, that people are going to be adopting we've heard the other guys talk about the market as well let's maybe we get some questions as well but aiming your take on the market, obviously you've been in the industry a long time, we have lots of different brands. Is it as tough as we make it out there at the moment? What do you see? And this is kind of, you wrote for RT earlier in the year, your, yeah. your sort of opinion on Brexit. What, where do you see us going into this sort of post-Brexit world? What's the future? Yeah, I made a couple of predictions in yeah. that article. I think most of them came through, so that was lucky, wasn't it? <laughs> About how, how you know, the market will uh, continue. People still need to keep living and buying and trading up and changing mm -hmm. homes. There will be some hesitation in the market. It was interesting to see the Bank of England uh, have forecast uh, an increase in the uh, GDP for the next three years in the UK. So it's finding a balance between, I think, those moments of uncertainty and hesitancy which consumers will go through. But the fact is, if the economy is growing, that's good for us all because it does create more demand. The markets have not done badly through the back end of 2016. And then you get into the very interesting uh, debate about what, what, what about the price increase? Well, I have been around long enough, I'm afraid, mm -hmm. to comment on this. And I remember a couple of periods where, you know, the currency swung wildly. I think we had a very good year, Roy, wasn't there, at Sony one year, where uh, the currency swung by about 15%, similar um, to this, and gave us some real problems with, with putting prices up in an industry that isn't used to putting prices up, usually going the other way, aren't we? But in fact, it is a chance to press the reset button. We, in that year, and I think there are parallels, there are similarities to this year, that year we sold less, we sold less units, and we gained more value, and we made a lot more profit together. Now, I think there's nothing wrong with that. We're writing the budgets now at Glen Dimplex, and... Uh, there is that sort of tone in things. What about the higher value? What about the GP? Let's not just chase the volume. And it's a drug for consumer electronics, as we know, over the years. And I think it's a responsibility for brands to present something that has more sustainability and a more solid foundation. So we'll certainly be pursuing that. We've got some lovely products which aren't necessarily mainstream all the time or aren't necessarily attacked by some of the global brands. So I'm not pretending that, that it isn't sometimes more easy for us to do that. But I would love to see that trend across more businesses. Great. We've got time for a couple of questions. Thanks, Andy. Uh, anyone, any questions for Andy? Well, I've got one, as always. OK, I can't believe that. <laughs> um, I knew you'd be trouble. Yeah. yeah. I'm wondering what role you think, or how far a supplier should go in telling a retailer how to run their business. Like, you trade them up on the products. We've heard a couple of times today talked about business, being a, more of a business advisor and helping them in the areas that perhaps are new to them. What, how, how far do you think you should go into someone's, in someone's independent business to help them, not just in products, but in how they run it? Yeah, I would never tell any of these guys how to run their business. Uh, I think that's a, that's a basic flaw uh, that I wouldn't presume to have the knowledge they have. I think we've seen some brilliant 
examples of that today, by the way. But I think as a serious brand, you have got to present platforms, opportunities, solutions that these guys can choose to feed off as suits them and the complexion of their business. And I, and I think there's a more basic question there, Andrew, about are you a genuine supporter of the independent trade? Are you committed long term to this business? And do you have the discipline as a brand to bring the shape in that gives a market architecture for these guys to thrive in? So I think, you know, the, the interesting thing about if you look at the, the distribution map we have today, the, the pattern now is fairly set in terms of shares. Even the internet share is leveling out now. Okay, we still saw some growth last Christmas, but the, the proportion of the internet business is leveling out. And without the next major technology wave, would probably stay the same for the next three, four, five years. I believe the connected home will, in fact, impact on that again. And I believe the specialist has a chance to prosper in that environment. <coughs> So the brands must uh, understand and interpret that well. And I think for me, and again, and again, my guys, whether they're the old Samsung team or the, the new Glenn Dimplex team, will have heard me talking about don't make a decision this month that doesn't make sense in three, four, five years' time. You have got to understand where you want to take your brand in the longer term. Take short-term pain if you need to to keep your integrity and brand equity and dealer relationships. So all these things have more value than hitting this month's short-term sales target. Surely. But if you've got retailers who are saying, I need help with digital marketing, I need help yeah. with salesmanship, which we've had today, I need help with my showroom design, because you basically have a complete new way of designing your showroom. Does the supplier have a role to play in helping those things or facilitating those things? Some of them, but brands will want to do their own thing as well. They have their own brand identity and brand story. Uh, so I think in terms of platforms, yes. Uh, you soon get to industry bodies also where you think, okay, there, there's lots of brands out there with really good assets, but how do you get people to pull that together for the trade, whether that's the buying groups, whether that's the industry associations, I think brands can contribute to the funding of those things, but that they should be pulled together as an industry uh, and certainly as a retailer-based solution because brands will bring, naturally, all sorts of individual propositions. What these guys need is something more joined up than that. Great. Brilliant. Any more questions? Then we're done. All right. One more. Quickly. Make it a quick one and we're done. Say them. Hi, Nigel McNally from Bailey's Domestic Appliances in Salisbury. Hi, Nigel. Hi. Bit of a contentious question for you in terms of Go represent, on then. <laughs> representing Glen Dimplex. Yes. Your situation in terms of retailing on the internet yourself, in terms of your website, what is your stance on that and what is your stance likely to be in the future? And uh, I'll just put a personal feeling uh, through to you on that, in that yes. many retailers are strongly opposed to suppliers actually selling on the net, all right, under their own branding. Uh, no matter what justification one tries to give, it becomes a competitor to ourselves. And I really think that that is something that needs to be viewed, but I would welcome your opinion on that. Nigel, thank you. And may I be contentious back, respecting very much your question. That's a bit of a backward-looking question, and I think it's not in the context of today. We heard it earlier as well. And I'll say so because I think what we're talking about today in terms of a turning point is brands and retailers in the independent channel working more closely together. I will tell you the truth about direct sales, and some of it's been explained earlier, and all of you would be surprised how little actual selling is done. It's a tiny amount, and it's not contentious in the terms of is that taking business away or customers away from what you do. What I do think, on a positive side, is more important in the future, is that the sites that brands have set up can be and should be more directed at channel friends and working together out there. And I think that's a very positive thing, which could and should bring, and I'll certainly be taking on as a personal challenge, working with retail partners, because the reason that manufacturer sites don't sell much 
apart from maybe Apple, aren't they the great brand, by the way, is that there is not enough of a consumer solution there. So they genuinely are, in my experience, more of a marketing face for the brand. But how can we link that traffic, that click-through rate, more into our retail friends, I think, for the next stage? Great. I think that's a nice positive note to end on as well. Great. Brilliant. We've got one more. Thank you, um, it's really a question that, that came up at the, uh, the last presentation, but you've obviously addressed it as well. That the, it, it's the security of smart homes, because obviously as things become more complex, they can become more fragile. And um, the issue of data ownership as well, these are two issues that I think are in their infancy at the moment, as the smart home is, but will need to be addressed. So do you think that organizations or companies or businesses that get their heads around that are sort of, uh, you know, getting ahead of the rest in terms of, asses of assessing the issue? It's one of the big questions of the day, isn't it? And um, I'm still in touch with old friends at uh, Google, uh, people like this who are working very much on the platform of uh, internet protocol and security there. It's more a software issue. It's... It's not as much uh, a product issue once you have a more solid platform and the security behind that. So uh, I think the products we're talking about today, connected products, assume that the platform has integrity. And I think we have to start there, although I think there's a lot more work to make sure about that and to develop more and more capability. With a few dodgy Russians out there or stuff like that, you cannot be too careful. But the, the products themselves are about great low-power Bluetooth devices or very high-powered sensors that feed off that ecosystem. Brilliant. Great. Thank you very much. Cheers, Andy. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time.